Good morning, and welcome to our service this morning. I extend a special welcome to Neve's family and friends, and we look forward to Neve's baptism as our service unfolds this morning. We celebrate Holy Communion next Sunday, the 6th of March, and as we did at the end of November last year, we will be using the fellowship cups to celebrate the sacrament. All material for March parishioner should be with Sandra Burns no later than this evening. These are all the intimations for this morning. As we prepare for worship, 
Let us pray. Living God, we come to you asking for strength and guidance in the days that lie ahead. In the stillness of our prayers and the reading of your word, speak to us of eternal things and renew our hope and plans for the future. Help us to work together, sharing our gifts and talents. Enable us to continue to build strong and firm foundations for future generations and draw near to you as we listen to you and one another. We praise, O oh God, for the hope of Jesus' presence, guiding our feet and lighting our pathway. Hear our prayer and thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our worship here in St. Mary's today. It really is lovely to see you all here in this place, and I know that there's folks that will be watching later online as far away as Canada, so welcome to each and every one. Eternal God is our refuge, and underneath our everlasting arms, arms that welcome us in love carry us in weakness, comfort us in times of trouble, and will never ever let us go. And so come then, and together seek the presence and the mystery of God as we join our hearts and voices in praise and worship the one who is everlasting. Our opening hymn is 189, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
boys and girls, it's lovely to see you here today. We've got some over here and some over this side too, and it's super to have you here this morning. Have you had a good week? Yep, lots of heads. Good week over here. Not bad, not bad. Good, good. Well, last week we were thinking about kind of what national days there were, and we remembered that I think last week was National Muffin Day and Cherry Pie Day and World Social Justice Day, and we were thinking a bit more about that and what it means that actually it's not just a day we think about justice, but all the time. And this week, there's a really fun day coming up. What is it? It is, you're right. Actually, there's, there's more than one good day. There's Pancake Day on Tuesday. He'll be making some pancakes. Yeah, he'll be eating some pancakes. Yeah, absolutely. You as well, really great, fantastic. And on Thursday, there's another day. <laughs> Grace. It is. It's World Book Day on Thursday. Who likes your books? Who likes reading books? Who likes stories? Yeah. Is anybody going to be dressing up on Thursday? Okay, let's hear some of your ideas. Harry Potter. Absolutely, because it's 25 years since the first Harry Potter book was written, was it? So fantastic, Harry Potter. Gangsta Granny, mm-hmm. Anybody else? Kai, would you go dressing up? No. Anybody else want to dress up? Yeah? What are you going to dress up as? No. If you could dress up as any book character, what would it be? A cat, yeah, absolutely. Maybe Cat in the Hat, perfect. Anybody over here? Anybody would like to dress up for World Book Day? No, you're all really shy. What about you, Zach? No? That's okay. Well, I've got a wee costume behind the communion table, so I'm just going to go and pop it on, and I wonder if you can tell me which character I'm going to be. Just excuse me. am I? Where's Wally? I've been called worse things, I'm sure. Where's Wally? And it's a good book, isn't it? <laughs> Neve's not so sure. She's looking, thinking, what has happened? What is going on here? Where's Wally? It's a good book. Lots of pictures, and in the story, you've got to find Wally. He's wearing red and white stripes and his glasses. Well, it's not Wally that I would like us to find in church today. Because in our story, we're going to hear about Jesus going up a mountain with some of his friends to pray. And he'd pray all night long, and his friends are asleep, but when they wake up, something amazing happens. Jesus changes before their eyes, and he becomes all white and dazzling, and they catch a glimpse of who he truly is, that he truly is God. And I wonder where we might catch glimpses of God in our world, starting with our sanctuary. Does anybody want to go on a wee journey with me? Out you come then, right? I'm going to take this stuff off. I feel a bit silly. Right, out you come. Okay, out you come. Now, where might we find God in the sanctuary? Well, let's go over here. Are you coming? Over you pop. Because today in our service, right here, at this place, we are going to do something very special. And Neve is all ready for it. Who can tell me what this is? What's this? Yeah. It is. It's the baptismal font. And we're going to pour water in. And here in this font, we remember God's grace and God's welcome and God's love because as we baptize Neve, we're going to say to Neve that God loves her and that she is welcome in God's family, that she has a place in the church. And so we catch a glimpse of God's welcome in baptism, and we'll look forward to that. Will we go somewhere else now? Let's go to, let's go up here, because what's around here? Let's go for a wee wander. There we are. Now, 
What have we got over here? Come round. What's this here? Right, move right round. What's that, Rudy? Do you know that big book there? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Bible. Yeah. There you are. And the Bible is open, and the Bible has lots of fantastic stories. And it's the story of God and God's people. And it's in two parts, the old and the new. And in the New Testament, we hear stories about Jesus. Do you remember where Jesus was born? Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, you're absolutely right. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so that story's in there. Hi, and we've got... <laughs> Give your mum a wave. <laughs> we've got stories about Jesus and his miracles. And we've got stories, like today, about his transfiguration. That's a big word, isn't it? And stories about his death and his rising again and all the adventures of the early church as they began to tell people all about God's Hi, love. Mommy. <laughs> let's move away. Let's go somewhere else, Rudy. Let's go over to this big table here and let's stand in front of that. Now, there's a couple of things here, right? Let's stand down on that step down there. That's it. Now, what have we got here? A candle. A candle. And you know, there's many ways to describe God and Jesus in the Bible, but one of them is it is a candle. And what's, what's at the top there? It's a light, isn't it? So we think about God's spark and we think about Jesus being the light of the world. Yeah. And we remember that at Christmas, but that's important all year round as well. And then this big table here. What's this table? It's a very special table. It's called a communion table. And this is where next week we are going to break bread and wine. And in it, we're going to catch a glimpse of God's wonderful love. Because when we break the bread and the wine, we remember Jesus broken and shared. We remember his death, but we also remember his coming back to life again. And we think about a time when everything will be made new. And when there will be a big, massive table where everyone will be able to sit. And everyone will have enough. And all will be well. And we could go on, couldn't we? Look at the stained glass. They tell stories, don't they? We catch a glimpse of God's love and God's grace and God's hope in the stained glass windows around us. And we could spend all morning going round and looking at the carvings and the things in there, the flowers. But I think people might want us to get on with the service, mightn't they? Yeah. But turn around and look out. And turn around and look at each other. Because do you know that right here in this place, even if we didn't have the tables and the Bible and the font and the cross, we would find God in each other. Because each of us is made in God's image. And when we love and share and forgive and encourage one another, then we are reflecting the light of God's love. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So this week... Why don't we look around and think, where are you, God, in our world? Where might we catch a glimpse of your wonder and your glory? Will we have a wee prayer? Let's have a prayer together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can catch glimpses of you all around us, in this place and in your world and in the faces of one another. Help us to be awake, Lord, and to look for your wonder and your glory all around us. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Boys and girls, thank you for coming on a journey with me a wee bit round the church this morning. You can go back to your seat and we're going to sing again. And we're going to sing a brand new hymn. 
and it's him 100 and 69 and it's called praise the lord with the sound of trumpet 169 and david's going to play it through once and then we're going to stand together and we're going to give it a go now reached the point in our service where young church are going to make their way over to the hall and then come back in time for Neve's baptism and if there's any young folks who would like to go and join in the activities over in young church then now would be the time to do it and there's also a creche so please feel free to go over and don't worry you'll be back in time for the baptism us meet God in prayer let us pray merciful God glimpses of your glory and presence can be found in the sanctuary of this place and its peace in the beauty of creation in all its wildness and wonder in your words open meditated upon and lived out in the love and peace and laughter shared among us and in the face of each person we meet for we are all made in your image 
And yet, in a noisy, busy, demanding, and often scary world, we cannot sometimes see it. We are so focused on our own priorities, so caught up in the things that must be done, so distracted by our own desires and wants, and so baffled and grieved and shaken by conflict in the world that we forget to look for you. And sometimes even when we do, you feel far away and hidden. And so, O God, we come with our faith, our doubt, our questions. And we pray that in these moments and in this place and together, we might still our hearts and minds and spirits long enough to breathe deeply and to ponder willingly the possibilities born of faith that you are here that you do love us and that in your grace forgive our sins and set us free from the power of death and that though we cannot see you as fully as we one day will you are the light of the world who is working your purposes out and will not in the end be thwarted by the hard-hearted and evil ways of man. Holy Spirit, come and breathe your peace among us and within us and grant us your wisdom, guidance and courage as we turn to your word that we might catch a glimpse of God's glory and look for you in our world. May it always be so. Amen. And so let's listen for God's word to us this morning. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. About a week after he had said these things, Jesus took Peter, John, and James with him and went up the hill to pray. While he was praying, his face changed its appearance and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men they were there talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in heavenly glory and talked with Jesus about the way in which he would soon fulfill God's purpose by dying in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were sound asleep, but they woke up and saw Jesus' glory, and the two men were standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, how is it, good is it that we are here? We will make three tents, one for, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not really know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them with its shadow, and the disciples were afraid as the cloud came over them. A voice said from the cloud, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice stopped, there was Jesus all alone. The disciples kept quiet about all this and told no one at that time anything they had seen. Amen. We now continue with the hymn 606, Lord, you sometimes speak in wonders.
Eve's quite happy having a walk around and you know that's lovely because she's in God's house and she's free to do that as long as she doesn't wander too far. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, over the last few weeks, some of us have been meeting on a Wednesday night on Zoom, and we've been participating in a short course called Be Still. And I, for one, have really enjoyed it, not only getting to know folks a bit better, but chatting about prayer and God and life. We've shared some of our struggles with prayer and some of our joys, and together we've shared and discovered new tools to help us develop our quiet time. In many ways, as the course draws to an end this Wednesday, it feels like we're just getting started, that we have but scratched the surface, and there is still so much more to uncover. And I think in a way that will always be so, for in our quiet time, we are seeking to draw close and near and deeper into the love and mystery and presence of God. God who is beyond our grasp and understanding and yet invites us into stillness and wonder and relationship and action. And it's those things that are at the heart of our reading that we have just heard today. For this is the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Next week we begin Lent and the journey to the cross and Easter morning. And this morning we get to catch a glimpse of the glory before the pain. And it feels as if everything we have heard and seen about Jesus in the last few weeks have been working towards this moment. How appropriate that we should find Jesus and three of his friends on top of a mountain. But let's remember and note why they are there. In Luke's account, they are there to pray. Once again, we find Jesus taking time out, away from the crowds and the demands to make space to talk with God. And it's whilst he is doing so that something happens. We're told that his face changes in appearance and his clothes become dazzling white, even whiter than Neve's baptismal gown this morning. And that Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the greatest of all the prophets, appeared. And they spoke to Jesus about his exodus about the way that he would soon fulfill God's purposes in Jerusalem. Luke is pointing here directly to the cross. And whilst this was happening, his disciples, exhausted and asleep, wake up and they see God's glory. The week after week and months after months of following, their listening and wondering and having an inkling have now been realized. They see Jesus for who he is. The one whom John speaks about in his opening chapter as the Word. The Word who became human and made his home among us, full of unfailing love and faithfulness, whose glory has been seen. Jesus, the babe in the manger, born in Bethlehem, now grown up, and on the mountaintop in prayer, they see his light. They see it because they are no longer asleep. They're awake. And I wonder, are we awake to God's presence in our lives? In the Be Still group, we had an interesting exercise to do last week 
We had to write down one thing every day where we had seen something that pointed to the wonder of God. And so we did. And with the permission of those participants, I share some of the responses with you now. We saw the glory and wonder of God in a beautiful sunrise, in the wonder of friendship, in a cat chasing and catching leaves in the wind, in the daffodils and crocuses and snowdrops, in the wonder of nature, those campsy hills, in four beautiful swans feeding in flood water, in the presence and chatter of children, and we see that today. In listening ears and perfect timing, at the funeral of a good and godly man, and the warm sun upon our face. And here, right here, in the life and work of St. Mary. And you too could add your own of those moments and places and people and counters that point us towards the wonder of God. Of course, on the other side of that, there are times when we might wonder where God is. Times when it seems impossible to see God's glory or find something that points towards wonder even when we are praying daily. In such moments and seasons, it can be hard to persevere, hard perhaps to see the point, hard to trust that God is there. And as I was thinking about that this weekend last, as a snowstorm arrived and the Campsy Hills completely vanished from view, I had a thought. All was white, the hills were hidden, and yet even when I couldn't see them, I knew that they were there. And it made me think about something I heard on Wednesday night, when the person who was talking about the campsies said that depending upon the weather, the campsies can feel very close or very far away. So too with God. Times when God feels close and other times far away. And sometimes if we're honest, completely hidden. And yet God's love is not dependent upon the weather. God, though unseen, never slumbers or sleeps but is always there. And he has made himself known in so many ways, but principally for us in Jesus, in his birth at Bethlehem, in his life in Nazareth, and his ministry in that area, in his death on a hill outside the city, and his resurrection in the garden. And it's Jesus' glory that we catch a glimpse of today as a voice speaks from the cloud saying, this is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. In a noisy, busy, demanding, distracting, and often scary world, God still speaks. His glory can still be seen. And there are moments and people and things every day that point us towards the wonder of God's love. And so may we be awake lest we miss them and take time to be still and listen. For you know, prayer is not another thing to tick off a busy to-do list or another chore to complete. It is as vital as the very air that we breathe. For like Jesus and the disciples, we cannot stay on the mountaintop. There is work to do. And so we come down 
into the valley of their daily routine and humdrum, into the shadow of death and war, into the delight of love and connection, we come down into the beauty and brokenness of humanity and creation and remember the moments where we have caught a glimpse of the glory of God and hold on to them that they might sustain us on the way as we seek in these weeks to follow Jesus all the way to the cross, to the joy of Easter morning and the promise of creation one day being made new and the whole earth crying glory. Where will you see God's glory and wonder this week? And what will you do to help others see it too? Amen. We're going to do things a little bit different in order today, and we're now going to pray. And sometimes it feels, is that all we can do? But you know, prayer has power. And perhaps like never before, you and I need to pray for our world as we see events unfold in Ukraine. And so, as we see Neve moving about in freedom with not a care in the world, let us be grateful for that. And let us join our hearts and our minds and spirits as we pray for that the whole world over. Let us pray. Almighty God, who is beyond our grasp and understanding and yet invites us into stillness and wonder and relationship and action with you. We thank you for your love, for all the ways we glimpse your glory in the world, even as the fields and forests are groaning and cities are bleeding and burning and the voices of the fearful cry out to you as they huddle down in underground places, wait in long snaking queues seeking refuge, pray in their homes, and fight on the front line, praying for ceasefire and peace. God, the prayers of our hearts are many and varied, and known to you. Yet today there is one that unites us all as we think of the people in Eastern Europe. And so we pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, for their countries and their leaders, and all those who are taking a brave stand against this madness, injustice, and undemocratic occupation. Lord, we pray that Vladimir Putin's heart might be changed and the hearts of those around him. We pray for an ending to the bloodshed and violence. We pray for the corruption of power to end. We pray for diplomats and peacekeepers and peacemakers and the United Nations. We pray for all those who are treating the injured and offering refuge and help. We pray, Lord, for all who are scared, for all who are wounded, for all who are lost, for all who are grieving, and ask, plead, pray 
that the light of your love and comfort, your courage and peace be near them all as they wait and face and endure all that the hours and days and week ahead will bring. Lord, in the silence, hear us. Lord Jesus, bring the day to pass when the only cries we hear are the shrieks and delights and laughter of children as we pray above all else this day for peace, that peace might be known in Ukraine, peace known in our world, that this darkness will end. And we ask it all in your name, the Prince of Peace, the light of the world. So be it. Amen. And so let us turn to that wonderful psalm that reminds us when we look every day at the campses, where our help comes from that presence that is always with us. The hymn is number 81. I to the hills will lift mine eyes. everybody. Well, welcome back, boys and girls. It's good to have you back in church for this very special moment. And once again, it really is lovely to have Nicola and Robert and all the family here with Godmother Emma and big brother Zach for this very special occasion. And Neve, you've been making yourself at home here, and rightly so, which has been lovely to see. We're going to baptize Neve today. 
And there's many places in the Bible where baptism is mentioned. We heard words today for Jesus from the clouds of God saying, this is my chosen son. And you know, he heard similar words when he was baptized in the River Jordan. And as he was coming up, the clouds opened up and the Holy Spirit came down and said, this is my son, with him I am well pleased. We hear it at the end of Matthew's gospel as well. Words about baptism when Jesus says, go and baptize and make new disciples and I will be with you always to the end of time. And you know, Jesus loved children. One time his disciples tried to stop the children coming to Jesus and Jesus said, don't do that. The children are welcome and he blessed them. So it's wonderful to see you, Neve, and to see all the boys and girls in church today. Through the waters of baptism, we will assure Neve of something which is already true, and that is that God loves her. And through the water and the Holy Spirit, her place in God's family will be sealed, and she will always have a place in St. Mary's and the church the world over. And so, I'm going to ask Nicola and Robert to stand and answer a couple of questions. Nicola and Robert, do you give thanks to God today for the gift of Neve? And in bringing Neve for baptism, Do you confess your faith in God, the loving creator, in Jesus Christ and through whom we are promised life and in the Holy Spirit, our helper and our guide? Thank you. And so I'm going to ask Emma, as Neve's godmother, please to stand. And Zach, I've got a special job for you. Would you like to pour the water into the font for Neve's baptism? Do you want to come and help me? There you are. There you are. Do you want to pour the water into the font? There you are. All of it in. That's grand. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Great. There we go. And so let us pray together. Gracious God, this morning as we prepare to witness and celebrate the sacrament of baptism, We are reminded that this is a special day made possible by you. For in baptism we see a sign of your love that reaches out to welcome all. We see a symbol of your grace that is poured out so that all might be renewed and made whole. And we see the seal of your promise to us as through water and the Holy Spirit you claim us as your own. Set us free from the power of death that we might follow and grow in the ways of Jesus and live in your presence forever. For in baptism, your love is offered to each one of us and though it is a mystery we cannot understand or explain, we are called to accept it with the openness and trust of a child. And so, gracious God, we come with thankfulness for this day, for the gift of Neve, for her family, and for the love which surrounds us all. Encircle us then with your presence, fill us with your grace, and grant us your peace, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this water, as you claim and seal Neve as your own. In Jesus' name, amen. And so friends, if you're able, will you all please stand? Neve, Margaret, it was for you that Jesus came into the world. It was for you that he lived and showed God's love. It was for you that he suffered the darkness of Good Friday. 
It was for you that he rose to new life on Easter day and is seated at God's right hand. All this he did for you, even though you know nothing about it, which just goes to show that we can love God because God first loves us. And so we're going to baptize you into that love now. I'm going to ask your mummy to bring you over. Neve, Margaret, I baptize you into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God descend upon your heart and live with you and stay with you this day and always. Amen. And we're going to sing a blessing for you now. We're going to turn to 796 and we're going to sing the Lord bless you and keep you. And if you want to go for a wee walk around the church and be introduced to your church family, then that would be just lovely. everybody yeah maybe during our final hymn Nicola and Neve can go a wee walk up the other side and you can see everybody up that way too Neve is now baptized into the fellowship of the faith. And we welcome and receive her as a member of the one holy and apostolic church. And there will always be a place for her and Zach and Robert and Nicola and everyone here in St. Mary's. We're going to ask some questions now and I'm going to ask Robert and Nicola and Emma to stand again, please, so please stand. Robert and Nicola, do you promise with God's help to continue to provide a loving home for Neve, to bring her up in the faith of the gospel and so far as you are able in the fellowship of the church? Thank you. I've got a question for Emma and for family and friends and for the whole congregation now. And I ask you folks to please stand once again. Emma, as Neve's godmother and as family and friends and as a congregation of this church, do you promise to love and to care for Neve, to encourage and support her parents in keeping the promises that they have made so that Neve may grow up in the grace and the knowledge and the love of God? And the answer is, we do. Thank you. May God help us all to keep our promises. Please be seated. And I know that we've got a little gift for you today. There you are. To help remind you of this special day. Thank you, girls. There you are. And you even got a wee smile. Fantastic. <laughs> Let us pray together one last time in this place this morning. Let us pray. God of love, 
guide and guard Neve all her days. May your love hold her, your truth direct her, your joy delight her, so that as she grows up, she may listen for your call and look for your wonder in the world. Bless her parents, Nicola and Robert, her godmother, Emma, and her big brother, Zach. Give to them wisdom and courage, laughter and peace, and the love that endures all things. And Lord, touch us all again this day with the promise of baptism, with a spirit of joy and hope that enables us to face the future with courage, trusting always in your loving purposes and seeking in all our living to be followers of Jesus with love at our core. May it always be so. Amen. And so we end our service with a wonderful hymn that reminds us of God's love for us. And it's 512, To God Be the Glory. And now a new week calls. Look for God's glory. Live to God's glory. And shed the light of God's love as you go. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and remain with you forevermore.
it was only as I was diving back up to sing the final hymn, I spotted a bag of rice and realized something that I should have done much earlier in the service. And that is one to remind you that fair trade Easter eggs or the real Easter eggs are available to order um, in the vestibule area. And there's more information about that. And next week, as we begin our journey into Lent, normally we give things up, but we're going to take something up, and that is the 90 kilogram rice challenge. In Africa, it takes 90 kilograms of rice to be sold for a farmer to be able to sustain a living and send his daughter to secondary school. And so next week, we are encouraging everybody to buy a bag of rice either white or brown rice for £3.50 and you're going to get a bit of information as you leave church today about how we're going to do that to help in the 90 kilogram rice challenge. All the rice is piled up over there and if you want more information then please do have a look. And for anybody who hasn't had their picture taken yet in front of the angel wings and would like to do so then please again wait behind at the end of our service. I don't think I've forgotten anything else, but to say I hope all of you have a lovely afternoon. Let's stand together and sing, may the God of peace go with us.